Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahushai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahushai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahushai, Bashem, Okal Kadash, double honors and salutations to the elders and apostles and bishops of Great Stone, the Aquan Akim Aquaf, try the four corners of the earth holding on in sincerity and diligence of mind to the gospel of the Lord Amashiach Yahushai in these days and times. This is what I'm not sure the DC camp. Short lesson for the hopeful elect. Yeah, so uh, the reintroduction of our people back to the Lord was just uh, the main mission of the Lord Hamashiach Kaushai. And that's exactly, you know, his main uh, description of his ministry. And that's just what it is. That's the whole gospel of the Lord Hamashiach Kaushai. That's the job of the prophets to reconcile the children of Israel, the so called Negroes, so called Latinos, so called Native Americans, back into the good graces of the Lord Yahabashimashai, Kadash. So that's just uh, our focus on this uh, lesson. So we read from the book of Proverbs, chapter one. I'm going to read a few verses. The top, uh, the top four says, "Do not wisdom cry, all right, and understanding put forth her voice, and has that done through the voice of the prophets, through the mouth of the prophets on the highways and byways, all right? She standeth in the top." of high places by the way in the places of the path so that is the job of the prophet the men of the lord over there and uh, across the whole world the four corners of the earth doing what the lord has uh, ordained them to do to cry out unto the people all right and then it says what in verse 3 she cried at the gates at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors, so major locations, you know, for our people to get these words, you will have the prophets there, all right? And the Lord is selective, so remember that, man. Brothers are not going to just uh, be on every corner, everywhere. <laughs> the Lord has to make a, a selective uh, placement, all right? And then uh, verse 4 says, uh, Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. So that's exactly what uh, Lord Amashach Yahushai is concerned about. Just like uh, when he went on the mission to call his uh, apostles, he was calling men, all right? was calling the men that the Lord had given him to uh, have his ministry jump started all right so that's just what it is the selection process he called a bunch of uh, you know of men given to him by the lawyer Howard to get the job done so that's how it is man for the prophets all right just like that voice <laughs> you know just like how Shai did his you know, his own thing for his ministry, he had to use the prophets again in these uh, times to uh, do that, you know. So the various camps, man, the brothers from the various camps, they all represent, you know, they're like an embodiment of the uh, the chosen elect, the chosen twelve, all right. That's what it is, man, the final twelve. That's just what the Lord Mashiach Yahushai has been focused on, all right? So now we go to uh, the book of Sirach, all right? So this is just the, the selection process of the Lord preparing us for uh, his service. Just like Esau talks about uh, select, selective service, <laughs> this is our own selective service, all right? The prophet's selective service, 
other, right? So uh, we go to uh, Sirach 17, verse 24. It says, but, but unto them that repent, why, those that heard the voice, all right? Those that heard the voice, the sons of men that heard the voice of the prophets, they heard the voice of the Lord of Mashiach, Yav Shai, by Hashem Kadesh. He granted them return and comforted those that failed in patience, those that couldn't deal anymore with this world, man, that were sighing and crying, continually sighing and crying for the improprieties, you know, for the oppression of this current world, you know, the, the sins and the abominations, all right, those that got fed up with the works of the flesh, all right, those that are fed up with the evil deeds of our people, the evil deeds of this world, the evil deeds of the heathen, all right, what does it say? And comforted, and comforted those that failed in patience, they couldn't deal, you know, you know, uh, with this madness, all right? Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. And that's exactly what uh, they had to do. That's a decision every man that comes to serve the Lord must, uh, must do. Return to the Lord, all right, repentance, right? Return to the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. So this is uh, the awakening process for the elect, all right? This is exactly what we're supposed to be about. Okay, then verse 26 says, Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity, for he will lead the out of darkness into the light of health. All right. So when you sick with the unrighteous uh, thoughts and actions, and you desire to be healed, what do you do? You have to start cutting out the stumbling blocks, whatever is causing you to be uh, in enmity against the Lord. You have to stop that, all right? And hate thou abomination vehemently. So that's what uh, it has to be. You have to learn to start cutting out the unnecessary actions and thoughts that separate you from the Most High, all right? So now, <clears throat> once you've uh, been able to go through that uh, process of admission, process of acknowledgement, of uh, your faults, what happens? Go to the book of uh, Hosea, chapter 1, and then you go to verse 10. It says, What? Uh, Yet the number of the children of Israel. So when you go in the blue letter, you know, you see that word there will be sons, all right? Yet the number of the sons of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, all right, which cannot be measured nor numbered, all right. So let me put it up my other uh, device. Man. I don't like uh, to use this uh, device to get online because of all these unnecessary adverts and uh, pop-ups from YouTube notification. So I'm going to get it from uh, my other uh, device. So uh, Hosea 1 and 10. All right, the blue letter. Yep. So it says, Yet shall the number of the sons of Israel, yeah, yet the number of the sons of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place, all right, that place is America, man. Babylon the Great, the bottomless pit in the Western Hemisphere. It's an extension of uh, Jesus' bottomless pit. <laughs> okay, remember that. Modern day Rome, that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power. All right. So when you look at the word in the blue letter, the Hebrew, for children, 
all right sons and then it says ye are the sons of the living power so remember that man you have to understand that once you begin to uh, repent acknowledge your faults and uh, rebuild and put the puzzles back together the lord has given you then your identity becomes clearer all right your identity becomes clear to you and you know exactly what is expected as by your service okay as by your conduct now we go to another precept we go to uh, the book of Peter the book of Peter first Peter chapter 1 uh, let's see let's look at uh, verse 15 what does it say but as he which had called you is holy all right the sons of men that are called by the Holy Father so be ye holy in all manner of conversation so that's the standard you have to uh, attain that's the standard you have to work uh, focus your mind on you know attach your spirit to all right first Peter 1 and 15 but as he which are called you that's the Lord Hamashaki Shai. all right so be ye holy in all manner of conversation so you have to be blameless in your conversation concerning the ministry concerning the upliftment of uh, your identity as an Israelite right concerning your salvation then verse 16 says because it is written be ye holy for I am holy and what does that mean you are preparing yourself to be sanctified you're sanctifying yourself with the service you've uh, been ascribed to okay now and how do you become I mean what does it mean for you to be holy so that means uh, you are uh, viewing yourself as a temple of the Lord all right the temple of the Lord is a holy place all right there cannot be any unrighteousness in that yeah so that's what it is just like uh, uh Bonnie Spear you know she sing that song you know Zion is a holy place you no know, sin can enter there so you have to know that you know you're the temple of the Lord so you have to be sanctified you have to be pure in your actions concerning the Lord as by your service and then verse 17 says what and if you call on the Father who without respect of persons judge it according to every man's work according to every man's conversation <laughs> according to every man's conduct past the time of your sojourning here in fear all right so you have to be in fear of the Lord okay so that uh, you keep yourself on your P's and Q's and that's what you're supposed to uh, let your focus be dedicated to dedicate your focus to being holy before the Lord let no guile be upon thy spirit All right so you could bear that uh, mark of exemption from a harsh judgment of the Lord okay now we go to another precept It's gonna be from the book of uh, let's see let's see let's see second chronicles all right so remember that second chronicles chapter 1 uh, verse 11 and uh, 12 so this is what uh, you're concerning yourself with all right just like uh, you're the image of the Lord Hamashai you have to uh, consider yourself to be a representation of what uh, happened in the King Solomon's vision in Yahweh's vision of how the Lord blessed him all right it says and Yahweh Bashim Abishai Bashim Kakadash said unto said to Solomon because this was in thy heart all right all right to ask for wisdom to rule the people in righteousness to prepare the people to be holy all right because this was in thy heart and thou has not asked for riches wealth or honor nor the life of thine enemies 
Remember that, you know, you're asking to be a profitable shepherd, a profitable servant. Neither yet has asked for long life. So we're not really seeking a personal gain, but we're seeking to serve the Lord in righteousness and in truth, okay? But has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, and doubt, right, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. So this is exactly, you know, a reflection of your life, a reflection of your service. So you have to understand once you are engaged in this ministry, you implicitly asking the Lord for wisdom and knowledge to teach this gospel, to teach Israel that needs that needs to repent. All right. And then verse twelve says, Well, in other words, wisdom and knowledge just says the, the Holy Spirit, okay? Wisdom and knowledge just uh, replace, replace that with the Holy Spirit, all right? For has asked for the Holy Spirit for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Alright? So wisdom and knowledge all right, so as you say, the Holy Spirit is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings which, right, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. So that's the reward. Of uh, seeking the Lord, you know, once you seek the Lord, He asks for His Holy Spirit. Hey, you're gonna be elevated above the people. <laughs> you're gonna be nearer to the Spirit of the Lord. How about Shema Shai, by Shema Kadash, and that's exactly what happens, man. You, you you are the apple of the Most High's eye. Okay, all right, and uh, the Lord is jealous over. His virgins, his servants, remember that. Okay, so um, we go to the book of uh, First John. All right, First John, chapter three, verses one and two. It says, "What behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us." All right, so just say uh, the Holy Spirit. Okay. That we should be called the sons of Yahweh by Shema Shai by Shema Kadash. So once the Holy Spirit is upon you, then that's an automatic indicator that uh, you are the son of living power, you're the son of Yahweh. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Okay, so that's a clear sign of separation. To know or not to know? That's the big question. All right. Now, that's something about this ministry. That's, a, that's, that's, the, that's what you call the, the something you must have <laughs> to qualify for salvation. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the Spirit of the Lord has to be bestowed upon us. Now, verse 2 says, Behold, now are we the sons of Yahweh Bashim Ashai Bashim Kakadash, and it doth not yet appear. So the, the final result has not been evident to the people. Has not the process has not been completed yet. It has not uh, been revealed to the whole world. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. Alright, so it's gonna happen it's gonna happen in the time of the Most High's uh, harvest, alright, at the conclusion of the matter but we know that all right so you already know you've given you've been given the four uh, the forward the, you've, you've been given the hindsight but we know that when he shall appear that's Lord Hamashiach Yahweh Shai we shall be like him so you're gonna be transformed from a mortal into an immortal okay for we shall see him as he is. So this is uh, the reward. 
all right this is the the manifestation of having wisdom and knowledge from the lord all right the holy spirit to uh, teach the people this is the reward okay to be as Yahweh shy to attain that level of perfection all right so once you've attained the level of perfection once it's been manifested that means that what your job has already been completed that's a conclusion of your job in the mortal flesh now you've been translated into an immortal flesh an immortal spirit okay now uh, we go to the the next precept it's going to be from the book of uh, hebrews so like here, yeah, book of hebrews all right the book of the hebrew israelites the book of the hebrews i buy you hebrews chapter 12 verses 7 and 8 what does it say if you endure chastening of the lord all right you're getting uh, purged and prepared to be a shepherd all right the shepherd is constantly going through refinement to make sure that the flock is properly uh, watched over it's properly protected you're getting more knowledge a shepherd is not an ignorant person you're learning on a daily basis man about uh, how to protect the flock from the elements from the you know the poisonous uh, weeds and all that stuff from uh, pests and uh, predators all right and then uh, you see have to sh uh, share the 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 wool of the of the sheep so they don't uh, feel uh, these ease all right so they do not uh, become uh, unhealthy you know heat stroke is not a joke man you know that's why you got to cut off the excess man you know that's what uh, this ministry is about man you have to learn to cut back the excess all right once you get to a certain level you pull back all right and then you start again you know constant refinement it's a cycle all right it's a cycle that's what the shepherd's supposed to be when it's time to share the the wool of the uh the, the sheep you do it as quick as possible before the season gets uh, extremely hot when it's cold when it's extremely cold you know the sheep need uh, that wool but when it gets hot and hot and hot like during the summertime and all that stuff then you gotta hurry up and get the job done that's what this ministry tells you all right hebrews 12 and 7 if you endure chastening yahweh deal it with you as with sons all right so a man that has a uh, his investments his thoughts in his sons he has to focus on them you know he has to make them uh, go through that process of upliftment for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not so the father is performing his responsibility all right he's setting a standard for his son to be in his service to take care of his business okay and then uh, verse 8 says but if you be without chastisement so if you've been ignored <laughs> you don't want that you don't want to be uh you know wayward all right you don't want you don't want to be uh like a, a weed you know like, like a plant is just growing wildly you don't want to be a wild olive branch anymore man you have to be pruned you know a wild a wild plant you have to be put back you know in, in a proper you have to be presentable that's what i'm saying but if you be without chastisement whereof all are partakers or who the the uh, elect okay whereof all are partakers then are ye bastards all right so if you're not being uh refined you just you know you, you're worthless you have no use for the development of the most high's business and not son so you're not going to receive any inheritance the son receives inheritance all right 
That's what it is. Sons re receive inheritance. So if you're not uh, worthy to be counted as a, as a son, how can you receive an inheritance? Okay. So it's that simple to understand, you know, uh, the principle the Lord has given us, the ancient principle of having an inheritance comes with uh, restrictions. You have to perform the duty of a son. All right. Now we go to another precept that's in the Hebrews chapter chapter two. And uh, verse ten it says what? For it became him for whom are all things, so that's Lord of Mashiach, Yahushai, all right? Because the Lord has set everything under him. Okay, you could read verse 9, it tells you that. For it became him, for whom are all things, right? So Yahushai is the ruler of the Most High's kingdom. The whole earth is put under the subjection of the Lord of Mashiach, Yahushai. And by whom are all things, right? So he, he was given the power to create okay the heavens and the earth in fact the galaxies and the, right the galaxies of it and the, you know, let me just say the universe just to keep it simple the universe the law how i gave you how shy the authority to create the universe and all its contents right so that means you have shy is what a content creator <laughs> in bringing many sons to glory so the sons have to be prepared to get a piece of the pie all right get a piece of the pie that the lord amashiach yahushai was given by the lord okay to make the captain of their salvation perfect true sufferings perfect true chastenings and that is the point all right perfect true chastenings perfect true sufferings okay perfect true patience all right yeah that's what it is man so it's a service of excellence just like you have the excellence a word about black excellence <laughs> yeah we have a uh, Yahabah Shema Shah's Excellence Award. So that's exactly what uh, the men of the Lord, the elect, have been uh, called to uh, participate in. Okay. So you can get an award at the end. Okay. Now, another precept will be from the book of uh, Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Verses uh, 13 to 15, it says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, obeyed what? Comply with what? With the word of the Lord, Hamashiach, the wisdom and knowledge of the Holy Spirit, okay? That the Lord, Hamashiach, made plain to his holy apostles, his holy servant. Not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. So that's the balance. Okay. In front of the the elders and on, on your personal time, on your personal your, your personal goings, all right? Before the presence of the apostles, before the presence of the Lord of Mashiach, Yahushua, once you're doing his service, and on your own personal uh, convenience, your own personal uh, opportunity, okay? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's what it is. You know, this is our service, to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So we have to be cautious about uh, our service to the Lord, we have to be constantly uh, reminding ourselves the standard with which we've been uh, called to abide by. You're not going to be able to get it right all the time, but as long as you're constantly practicing, rehearsing, 
the Lord knows that uh, hey, you're sincere, all right? That's what it is. So, verse 13, for it is Yahabashim and Shai, Bashim Kakadash, which worketh in you both to do, right? Both to will, right? Both, I mean, both for you to desire and to do his guru, his good pleasure, all right? I got a tongue twist today. Philippians 2 and 13, for it is Yahabashim and Shai, Bashim Kakadash which worketh in you right the holy spirit all right but to will all right you gotta have that desire and to do of his good pleasure so you have to be a partaker all right you have to be a fellowship you know, a fellowshipper all right a yoke fellow all right and then uh verse 14 uh, let's see. Yeah, verse 14 says, Do all things without murmuring and disputing. So once, uh, you know, these murmurings and disputing comes from a place of uh, unease, all right? When you go into the chest of the Lord, it's not as sweet as uh, some people like to, you know, as uh, people think it is. But it's not, <laughs> you know, nobody likes to be criticized. But you have to learn to absorb the words of criticism, positive criticism. That's what this ministry is about. You have to learn how to take positive criticism from the Lord. All right? Chastenings from the Lord. Serve the Lord without murmurings and disputings. Okay? It's not beneficial to the ministry to be whining and complaining about this and that. Learn to... Uh, Look at the bigger picture. All right? That's what the Lord Hamashiach Yahweh always reminded his uh, 12 uh, elect apostles and, his, uh, and the doers of his, uh, his commandments. Then verse 15 says that ye may be blameless and harmless. All right? Blameless. In other words, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you, you're not... Uh, held liable for your faults despite all you have done to obey and harmless not a word you didn't cause any harm to the body all right the allegations of the faults the mistakes you've made are not held against you despite you being held accountable that ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of Yahabah Shema Shahabah Shema Kakadash without rebuke, or at a, at, a, at a time of judgment, right? without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, all right? without that uh, condemnation from the Lord. All right? The Lord will not condemn his elect, so remember that. In the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, all right, among whom, all right, so we're in the midst of uh, turns and briars and serpents, just like the Lord warned us about. You know, our people are just uh, conniving and uh, always seeking to uh, upend the ministry of the Lord. They refuse to return to the Lord. They become enemies of the Lord, among whom ye shine as lights. In the world so lights only shine in darkness okay so that's a clear demarcation a clear separation so someone has to know exactly what is shining and what is not shining that's how it is that's how it is before the Lord the Lord has the Lord knows exactly who is glowing before his presence and what makes you glow the Spirit his Holy Spirit the spirit of knowledge and wisdom. Let me say wisdom and knowledge. Okay, that's how you you know you are able to uh, be identified by the Lord. When the Lord looks down from His heavenly place, He sees that His elect have that glow, that spirit, the Holy Spirit is what makes you shine. Remember that. Okay, now. Uh, 
we go to the final precept, Romans chapter 8. Verse 14, it says what? For as many are led by the Spirit of Yahweh, they are the sons of Yahweh, for as many as are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of Yahweh, the Spirit of Yahweh, all right? For as many as are led by the Spirit of Yahweh, they are led by the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh. They are the sons of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai by Hashem Kadesh. So that was the conclusion of this lesson, man. A son receives an inheritance of his father. A son is prepared in the line of service his father has uh, assigned him to be a part of. Okay, Every son has a service to perform. Every son knows that uh, for him to receive an inheritance, to, for him to receive an, a reward, he has to perform the well wishes of his father. All right? So that's the point that I came up. Baratiza, you've been edified by Shem Yahushai, by Shem Kadash, with the approval of Yahweh. Shalom.